In the world of professional wrestling, many carry the label of being a tough guy. This guy looks pretty hard, wouldn't want to bump into this one down a dark alley, and yep, that is one tough bastard right there. However, there is one man whose reputation outshines all. Haku. The man many also know as Meng has garnered a reputation as being perhaps the toughest man to emerge from the famed pseudo sport. He may be responsible for this absolute stain on the industry, but this guy is one you do not want to mess with. Please don't hurt me, Mr. Haku. I'm just doing my job. I'm Adam Wilborn from What Culture, and these are 10 wrestling stories that prove Haku was badass. Number 10. The Tank and Gun Story We start with a story that is less a recounting of something Haku actually did and more of a quip that just shows how respected Haku is amongst the wrestlers that he competed with during his peak years. Jake the Snake Roberts created a perfect hypothetical situation that shows just how dangerous the Tongan native is in real life during a shoot interview in 2013. In his own words, if I had a gun and was sitting inside a tank with one shell left and Meng is 300 yards away, he's mine, right? Well, the first thing I'm going to do is jump out of the tank and shoot myself because I don't want to wound that son of a bitch and have him pissed off at me. Yeah. Incidentally, if I had a gun and was in a room with Hitler, Bin Laden and Tama Tonga, I'd shoot Tama twice. Jesus Christ, Wilborn. Did you not see what Haku nearly did to Simon Miller? <laughs> Too much? Number 9. Making WCW too scared to fire him Following his most famous stint in the WWE, Haku made his way to WCW alongside many other stars of the era. He quickly became part of the <clears throat> famed Dungeon of Doom, which battled Hulk Hogan and played host to some of the most disastrous ideas for characters ever created. Following that first storyline, Hacker was positioned as something of a gatekeeper. So why did they keep him around for seven years? Well, in Eric Bischoff's words, we never fired him in WCW because no one had the balls to do so. You and me both, mate. Number eight, apologize to my friends. Chris Candido spoke about an incident where he was having a conversation with Haku alongside Tammy Lynn Sitch and Chris Jericho, only to have it interrupted when Eric Bischoff and Greg Garnier walked in front of them and started talking to Haku. Haku was none too pleased. As Candido states, he looks at them and goes, hey, and the entire locker room just froze. And then Meng says, apologize to my friends, I'm talking. And everyone shuts up, while Bischoff and Ganya apologised to me, Tammy and Chris. Again, bear in mind that Bischoff was the head of the company, while Ganya worked as a road agent. Jesus. Thank God he didn't catch us. Number seven, no selling mace to the eyes. An incident described by Rick Steiner not only demonstrates Haku's toughness, but also shows that he wasn't afraid to tangle with law enforcement if the time came. During an interview, Rick spoke about a barroom brawl that eventually led to the police showing up. Faced with eight officers, Haku refused to back down, of course. Steiner continues, they shot him with mace and he closed his eyes and sucked it up. He just opened his mouth and took a deep breath. Scotty and I always thought we were tough guys, but that was before we met Meng. Bear in mind here that Rick and his brother Scott are themselves considered some of the toughest guys in the wrestling business. Furthermore, Mace is hardly the most pleasant substance in the world. There is a reason why it is used to disable people after all. So to be able to simply withstand it and keep going is an absolutely ridiculous feat of toughness. Number six, choking Brutus Beefcake. Haku wasn't afraid to mix it up with the boys too when the occasion called for it, especially if he felt that he'd been disrespected in some way. That was clearly the feeling when WWE management informed him that Brutus Beefcake had complained to them about being chopped too hard in a match the pair had taken part in that night. Aww. Clearly riled by the fact that Hulk Hogan's favourite bag carrier wasn't man enough to confront him directly, Haku allegedly stormed straight to the locker room on the hunt for Beefcake. 
As the story goes, when he found Beefcake, he proceeded to not only choke him for the slight, but also to lift him two feet in the air while doing so. Naturally, the rest of the locker room was far too terrified to do anything about the situation, so they did the only thing they could do and fetch the Hulkster. When informed about the situation, Hogan arrived and politely asked Haku to release Beefcake. Thankfully for Brutus, Haku released the hold simply due to the fact that he respected the Hulkster. I wonder if he respects us. Backstage Bullet Club block party with the world's toughest wrestler. Ah, oh, damn, Alicia. I almost have a heart attack. <laughs> uh, trying to beat the shit out of all these British. Yeah, Coming so... out here and start throwing punches at my son, yeah. Tamatonga. No f***ing way that anybody will come and take any of my family. Do or die. That's what it is. Damn it. It, Try me! Try me, goddammit! Okay, that, that's Haku's take. Um. Uh, guess not. Number five. Biting chunks out of a guy's back. I mean, need I say any more? Kevin Sullivan has gone on record to state that he would use Haku as a threat back when he was a booker, as wrestlers had a way of coming around to his ideas if they were threatened with a confrontation with a terrifying Tongan. Of course, like many on this list, Sullivan had first-hand experience with Haku. In an interview with WWE Classics, he tells the story of another barroom brawl, which was caused by an insulting word uttered in Haku's direction by a man playing pool. As Sullivan puts it, the next thing I know, Meng Goozles, great word, the guy like Mr. Spock. It was fast and furious. Not that one. He then grabbed another guy who tried to get involved and knocked him unconscious. That alone is more than enough to warrant inclusion on this list, but Sullivan continues the tale as the man who started the whole thing gets his. Meng bit through the guy's shirt like a wolf, bit a chunk out of the guy's back, and then spit it on the floor. Yeah, I think I'm gonna need a minute. Number four, pulling teeth. You have to imagine that Bobby Heenan has more than a few stories about Haku, especially given the fact that he was the Tongans manager for a number of years in the WWE. This was confirmed, and then some, in a shoot interview with Heenan in 2001, where he spoke about Haku being the toughest single person he had ever met. To bang that claim up, he spoke about an incident where Haku literally tore the teeth out of a man's mouth with his bare hands. In the brain's own words, he took two fingers on his right hand, his index finger and trigger finger, and he reached into our guy's mouth and broke off the guy's bottom teeth. Well, it's nice to know that Haku would have been a perfect fit for the world of dentistry if the whole pro wrestling thing hadn't worked out. Number three, snapping handcuffs. It seems that Haku had something of a penchant for getting into barroom brawls, but in this case, the Tonga was actually looking to break the fight up rather than cause any damage. As Ted DiBiase puts it, some of the guys got into a fight and Meng got involved. He was just trying to help and in the process of trying to help, gets maced by four cops and handcuffed. He said, is this it? And snapped off the handcuffs. Again, we have a story about Haku absorbing mace like it was nothing, only this time the big finish is snapping a pair of handcuffs. You have to imagine that there were a couple of police officers who were glad they'd worn their brown trousers to work that day. Number two, the Jesse Barr incident. The fight with Jesse Barr is one of the most legendary stories surrounding Haku. Gather around, children. The story goes that Haku was walking with Barr during a tour of Puerto Rico when Barr decided to kick dirt onto a man who was digging ditches. Offended by this slight against a hard-working man, Haku is alleged to have ripped Barr's eye out of its socket, with some versions of the story going so far as to claim that Barr wrestled with a glass eye for the rest of his career. Now, I hate to be that guy, but... Oh, no, hang on a second. No, I don't. Haku spoke about the incident himself and revealed... It's only partially true. While the altercation certainly happened, with Haku getting Barr into the position where he could pop his eye out of the socket, the Tongan claims that he realized that Barr was a brother on the road and had a family to support, so stopped himself from going through with it. So he only almost ripped someone's eye out of its socket. <laughs> Number one, the Baltimore Airport Barroom Brawl. As previously mentioned, telling Haku that what he does for a living is fake 
is a major berserk button that you simply do not want to push. In fact, let's just assume you're an arsehole if you say that to any wrestler and just be done with it. Hey lads, from all accounts, he sees the business primarily as a means to support his family, again, despite this guy, rather than to gain fame and fortune, which is why he takes particular offense when somebody tells him that what he does for a living isn't real. In an interview with World Wrestling Insanity, Haku recounted an incident much like a number of the other barroom brawls on this list. A couple of patrons decided to get lippy while Haku was enjoying a drink. He took offense, and as he puts it, I reached over without thinking there are four other guys over there, grabbed his face, and bit his nose off. Then the fight started, we kind of clean house there, and left. I'll never forget it. Ooh. It takes a special kind of viciousness to tear a man's nose off, but despite these stories, Haku has a reputation as a devoted family man who commanded respect, but was also liberal with his friendship. Just don't piss him off, eh? So there you have it, 10 wrestling stories that prove Haku was an absolute badass. Do you believe them? Are they true or are they false? Let us know in the comment section below. And don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Thanks for watching. I've been Adam from What Culture. Follow us on Twitter and we will see you soon. Are you talking to me? The 10. I thought you were the one who's going to tell me the 10 famous stories. What, who are they and what are they? Uh, are they true? Well, it depends on what you're going to talk about. You tell me and I'll tell you. Don't stay, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm waiting. Don't bullshit me now. Tell to me. Go ahead. Yeah, they're probably true. Please don't hurt me. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. You're taking my time. Hurry up. Please. Please. <laughs> I am waiting, it's coming, come on now, hurry up with you, please, hurry up, talk to me.